Got a little honeycomb on there. Ace Magic sending me this mini PC with the i9 12900H in it, 512 gig SSD, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a ton of IO as you just saw in the photo there. And since I've been doing a lot of reviews on hard drives, I was like, let's check out a little mini PC that you could just throw one of these 12 terabyte hard drives on and uh, have a retro gaming mega system. But not only that, in this video, you know, I'll also be playing some uh, newer games as well. We'll be playing Counter-Strike 2, we'll be playing Fall Guys, we'll be playing uh, Doom, and also checking out Fortnite. Now, this thing does not have a dedicated graphics card, but because of its really high-end CPU and the onboard graphics, it's actually not half bad. And so you're going to save some money there. Um, and then if you like RGB, you like kind of, it looks really cool, as you saw in the first uh, scene of this video. It just, it looks like a little book. So it's got a lot of cool little things going on. So let's go ahead and check it out. Retro gaming and then unboxing and let's go. So uh, here it is. And uh, you'll notice on first boot, it is running Windows 11, and it does come with its own RGB software. You can do like breathing, you can make the RGB turn off, turn on. The other thing you might have missed too is it has different modes on the front, so it has silent mode, things like that. What I'm doing right now on your screen is I'm just getting the 12 terabyte hard drive uh, build that you know a lot of people seem to like. And a lot of people are like, can you plug this into your computer, this build right here? Everyone's like, oh, or my TV, can I just plug it into my... No, you need a computer to then plug it into your TV. So I thought, why not do that with this mini PC? Let's go ahead and put the hard drive on and see how it performs. So here we are, PlayStation 3, Raymond Origins, and as you see, not a single dip in performance. Now, there is no sound on this game right now uh, because my screen capture card didn't get it, but there's zero lag whatsoever on this game. Uh, moving along to some harder to emulate games, uh, well, this is actually pretty hard to emulate. We're also going to be doing PlayStation 2, one of the hardest games, which is Midnight Racer uh, 3, or Midnight Club Racer 3, and, um, you know, not having any issues whatsoever, no, no lag, no frame tearing, nothing like that. So as you can see here, it's going to play all the way up to PlayStation 3 as far as your emulation goes. Um, the thing is super quiet even when you got this thing revved up and I trust me I maxed it out I got it to lag later in this video and it still runs great so a little Tetris asset action little Nintendo 3DS we got Jonas with the Tetris boom got it moving into some GameCube we've got some uh, F-Zero and uh, as you see here race to the finish line first place uh, Street Fighter 2, I believe this is the anniversary edition. You see, just running. And at this point, you know, these games don't normally lag anyways. But <laughs> I was just like, you know, I'm going to play all these different games and just make sure they load and they work and this is all plug and play. Uh, I am using Xbox 360 controller. Uh, here we go. This is in the PlayStation 4 category, but it's my understanding it's kind of a PC port of the Diablo 2 Remastered. So moving over to a mouse and a keyboard here. Remember, this thing has USB 3.2 on it. So you're going to get some crazy fast transfer speeds if you want to transfer stuff and uh, plug in all your different devices, charge your different devices. It's all good. So here you go. You got Arrow Fighters. Again, you know, not a hard game to emulate, but I thought I'd do some arcade style games just to show that it's working well. So moving over to Fall Guys here and uh, trying to get first place. Let's see how I do here. But as you see, very, very playable. Fall Guys is not a very hard game to emulate whatsoever and it is on high detail is high right now and uh running great mind you i am running 1080p don't expect to do any 4k gaming here moving along to fortnite jumped into a game here um i believe things are on medium right now and as you see there you know it's dripping 50 60 fps i can absolutely lower the resolution a little bit and get a much higher frame rate but um, this, is, this was playable. As you see here, I'm able to kill quite a few people and not have the lag being an issue why I'm not killing them. I mean, come on. Mid-air mid shot, you know, you better have some pretty good performance there. All right, now this is uh, CSGO 2. I went ahead and went all the way up to high, revved it up, and you can see here I just got it to lag like crazy. It was very much unplayable. But again, I ramped it up. 
on first boot, it had it on these settings. I'm just going to set it back to where they had it uh, from first boot. And here you go here. And uh, as you see here, um, you know, running pretty well. You can expect anywhere between 60 and 90 FPS here. Um, on uh, the next game, Doom ran great. I understand this is a little older of a game, but this thing was just taking this like a champ. So all in all, you know, you can get better performance with a dedicated graphic card, especially in the gaming. But if you're just going to be doing like Reddit, YouTube, some emails, some office stuff, some emulation, things like that, this thing's going to get you covered. Ace Magic is here. This thing is rocking some serious horsepower. This one has the US spec, 512 gigabyte hard drive, 32 gigs of RAM, gray, and the i9 processor. Power and bricks, and this is a little HDMI cable. What is this thing running? 19 volts, 6.3 amps, 120 watts. Woo! This thing's power hungry. Ready? Y'all ready for this? One, two, three. Nice. Y'all ready for this? One, two, three. It's got a little honeycomb on there. So here's that knob I was telling you about earlier. You got the, some front ports. You got the majority of ports on the back as well. But uh, you can go ahead and go to silent, auto, or performance here. Silent in the far left, auto, and performance. And that's just going to mess with the fan speed, how much performance it's going to get. Uh, and, you know, I, I would imagine if you're running this for gaming, I would just be keeping it on performance. It's going to be a little more power hungry, but you're going to get the best uh, frames per second on this thing with that. And then there you go. There's that RGB we've been talking about. And uh, if you're all about aesthetics, I can see people getting really into this, um, really getting into it. Remember, it does come pre-installed with Windows 11. You just boot it up. It'll come right up, and you can just start gaming or start installing Steam or, or Epic Games or, you know, attach a little hard drive. There's the honeycomb. And remember, you can change that. You can turn it on, off. You can change it to all kinds of things. All right, so let's go ahead, and here's the CPU. You can see it there in CPU-Z right now. Um, you'll also, we're also going to go ahead and see that you can see the motherboard, memory, 32 gigs DDR4, and then the CPU, let's go ahead, we tested it, here's the single thread and multi-thread score, and then you can refer to a 9900KF there as far as performance uh, goes. And then here is the onboard, that was the onboard graphics. And then let's not kid ourselves, you know, a lot of what we do on our computers is, you know, YouTube, visiting different websites, talking to different people. So it's going to do all that. It has all the I.O. for it and everything else. So um, final thoughts. Uh, like I said, I think if you're really into aesthetics, I think that's number one. Uh, number two, somebody who just doesn't need a crazy, crazy powerful computer. Great. Uh, somebody who likes the, like I said, aesthetics, look at this thing. It looks really cool. It looks like a book. You got all the different IOs there. You got, you, and it's USB 3.2. You know, by using a newer Intel graphics card, it's also going to use a newer motherboard. And so you're going to get all the latest and greatest as far as inputs and outputs. Moving over to the actual um, performance, you know, the, the, it's, a, it's a really fast processor. So, um, you know, you're going to get some great performance um, doing everything, multitasking. Uh, you got the 32 gigs of RAM, so you can have a lot of things open at once. It's going to really do well. Now, um, the last image I want to show you was there was you can easily upgrade this. You know, some people might think 512 gigabytes is not enough space, but you can run an external hard drive by USB, or you can actually remove the internal one and go put up to a two terabyte hard drive in there. And then same with the RAM, although I don't know why you would update the RAM. That being said, this isn't the only variant they sell. They also sell a Ryzen version of this computer, and they sell a bunch of other computers as well. They're like, hey, they asked me if I want to check it out. Obviously, I said yes. It was, you know, the specs looked pretty uh, respectable. And uh, I think they delivered on everything they said. Um, as far as what you're buying, you know, you're buying a squared away, ready to go PC that, as far as where the performance is at, you can do some pretty significant 1080p gaming and a large variety of emulation, and then all your daily tasks are gonna do well as well. So 
Here's uh, one option for you. They sell laptops and all kinds of stuff as well. I'll put a link in the description to their site. But um, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.